Welcome to the Run Testers. I'm Kieran. I'm Nick. And today we're going to be talking about the Apple Watch Series yeah. 6 and whether or not it's any good for running or not. So Nick, what is new with yeah. the Apple Watch Series so obviously 6? a lot of us are pretty familiar with Apple Watches, so we guess we thought we'd pick out a few things that might be of interest, for runners in particular. The always on screen is now slightly brighter when it's, um, well it's actually considerably brighter, but you know, in real world it's slightly brighter um, uh, when you're not using it. So actually that's good on the run because you can see your stats a bit more clearly without turning your wrist. There is also a new heart rate sensor which brings into play blood oxygen saturation monitoring. Uh, so blood oxygen saturation is a big topic this year with COVID. Um, even though I know it can be a sign of necessarily that your symptoms might mean something serious is going on. That's all really something you should do with a doctor or a medical professional. But in terms of the health and fitness set area, is there much use to it? Yeah, you can. I mean, it's, it's a little bit complicated, but you can use it firstly to see whether or not you're sort of able to run. If illness is coming in, if you're sort of fully recovered or you should be doing an intense session that day, low blood oxygen saturation scores might mean that you want to take a day off mm. or rest. And you can also use it, I believe, during runs to see how it depletes to oh, assess yeah. overall kind of fitness progress, but it's a little bit of a complicated And I'm not sure the app, the app Watch is that keen on you swapping between apps during runs either, is it? So, no, yeah. no, so it might not be, it might be something you have to look at after, but yeah, we're, we're moving towards that world, but. Exactly, yeah. Um, this watch also has sleep tracking now, which is a softer update. You're getting it on previous Apple Watches as well. We'll come onto it, it's not brilliant, really. But it also uh, has some effects in terms, of it can now take better readings of VO2 max at low ranges. So basically, if you're less fit, you'll get more accurate reading. And I think down the line, they're gonna bring VO2 max alerts to the watch. So I guess if you start improving it, the watch will tell you. That's quite nice. And then some other new stuff, which isn't just for runners, it's got a quicker processor and it's got some new watch faces, standard update stuff you get every year really on the Apple Watch. And that's more or less it. And it also comes in blue. All right, the design of the watch, it's an Apple Watch. There's a few key notes here, Kieran. Yeah, so it's classic AMOLED screen, nice and sharp, nice and bright, it's crisp. It's kind of, you know, this is a real treat compared to most running watches when you're looking at it. Yeah. It's a smart watch, it has that in its bank. And it's very responsive when you're touching it, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. all of that is kind of that, that, that kind of beautiful usability that comes with Apple that you expect is all nice. Yeah. Um, you've obviously got the crown controls, the ECG measurements yeah. taken from the crown as well, which is another thing you can use to track your heart health. Um, a billion different straps <laughs> that are easily to interchange. So you can, yeah, you can basically customize this as you wish. Um, my preference is for like a, a nylon strap. I like the it. sports loop, but the silicon to run in, I find. Um, it's also got built-in GPS, a heart rate monitor, a very yeah. good heart rate monitor of all these sensors for things like ECGs, which actually from the Series 4 onwards has meant it's very good actually at tracking during runs as well. It's basically, the, it's probably the smartest smartwatch. In terms of the app store you get, it's phenomenal. You can get everything on here. It's obviously got all the music, things like podcasts, Apple Pay, every app under the sun, especially for sports. And it's got a native workouts app, which yeah. is, we'll come on to, it's, you know, it's okay, it's a bit basic, but um, you can pretty much pick any app you've ever heard of and it will be on the Apple Watch more or less. Connectivity wise, you can actually link up a heart rate sensor or um, even a stride pod through Bluetooth. There's a very good stride app actually. So it's got a little bit more connectivity than most smartwatches I'd say. Yeah. It's all Bluetooth, there's no ANT plus. I think that's, that's one thing where this comes into, it's, a, it's different compared to running watches because actually third party devices, mm. foot pods, other things, you can start to build those in and have their, their apps native on the wrist as well. Yeah. So some of those stats that might be hidden on your phone with accessories are more visible on these watches and, and easier to see than they might be on a yeah. Polar or a Garmin or a Coros. Yeah. So battery life, obviously, it's always a hot topic of Apple Watches. What are like the official stats on this, Karen? What do Apple say you'll get from it? So we've got six hours with GPS and music, mm. and then we've got seven hours GPS only, and then up to 18 hours yeah. just general usage. That's the claim. That's you know that's the max that you want to get out of this. And with Apple, actually, they tend to over maybe play the GPS, but underplay the overall thing. I think 18 hours, you'd actually, if you're just using it as a watch, you're going to get through more than that. I Now it's got sleep tracking, you have to charge it in the day, which is a bit annoying. But um, I would basically take it off the charger around 10 when I go to sleep, go for the whole next day, put it back on the charger around 8 p.m. to charge before I went to bed. And I nearly always have about 40% left, even on a day with a run. On a day of a long run, I'd have about 30% left. So if it's like an hour and 45 minutes, that's how much I deplete it with that. 
Now, I don't listen to music while on the run with the Apple Watch, though, and that so, does So if you're it. tracking your sleep, you're waking up and coming out with how much left? I normally... Do you run so, early in the morning? Uh, so basically, when I get up in the morning, the watch normally has over 80% left, um, but you are getting through a day quite comfortably, and it does charge very quickly, basically. So it charges in an hour for 80%, 90 minutes fully charged. Yeah. And that's obviously a big bonus with the sleep tracking thing. The only thing about that is the sleep tracking is pretty dreadful. I think I'd rather just charge the watch at night. It's more convenient. I, yeah, the sleep compared to other devices that you've got, it's it's very very limited still. But it, it seems... just gives you the time of sleep. Yeah. So right now during the COVID pandemic, I'm at home a lot. I've got a very fixed routine. Finding a time to charge in the day is not hard. On a day where I was travelling into work, going to something in the evening, getting home, I'd have not had time to charge this watch probably. Yeah. So I would just charge it at night. And I think that'll probably be the routine many of us slip back into yeah. in time. Until they improve that, it's not really worth. Not the, the, the trade-off yeah. isn't enough. Right, the run test is the key performance thing for us, really. And, yeah, um, and you've got some interesting insights into the into the GPS performance, which is, I guess, has been something that's been a little bit of a, a bugbear. Yeah. In previous editions of the Apple Watch. Basically, I love the Apple Watch, and I would wear it if it was better for running. But um, GPS has always been a problem for me. I find that if I, especially if I run with my phone and it piggybacks on the GPS, every previous Apple Watch would smooth off corners and I'd end up with a shorter distance run, and, and also my pacing's wrong, everything's wrong, basically. Um, and this new watch, the Series 6, is the first time it doesn't do that. It's matched my Garmin, I can see the tracks afterwards are following the correct route. It's still not perfect, but I took it for like a long track session, it did one lap, just cut off a bit of a corner, and that meant the whole thing you know, was 20, 20, uh, 0.2 of a K short or whatever. But generally, this is the best Apple Watch GPS accuracy I've come across. It's matching my Garmin, and it's a huge leap forward by not just smoothing corners in a way that I presume was just saving battery or something, or taking fewer readings. But it's much better. It was always fine if you ran without your phone, I think, but now it's fine even if you're running with your phone. And that is huge for me. <laughs> and the other thing that I think has improved as well, we've sort of talked about, is the heart rate. Yeah. From my experience, looking down at my watch, comparing it to the H10 chest strap, you know, mid-run, they seem to be mm. pretty much there or thereabouts in terms of beat for beat. Yeah. Um, and the averages and the maxes after the run have been pretty much spot on in most of the conditions I've tested it against. I, I find I have to do it with a silicon strap. With the sport loop, I don't get very good heart rate. Silicon strap tightly done up. I've done it on runs. I've done it on a cycling spinning session. Where I was doing intervals watching the watch against the chest strap. And it actually it follows intervals speed, more speedily than most wrist-based heart rate runs I've come across. And the thing that this does, which I really like, which maybe people won't, is if it can't get a good reading, it just stops reading your heart rate. You'll see it grayed out on the screen and it will come back five minutes later because it's got a heart rate fix. So instead of giving you inaccurate numbers, it gives you no numbers, which would definitely be my preference, basically, because it doesn't skew the whole average for the run then. The problem with that is I did have one run where it lost an hour in the middle because it just couldn't get a fix. I think it's because I was wearing a sleeve, it kept bumping yeah. it. But as wrist heart rates go, this is right up there, I think. It helps, it's very small and light, I think, probably. And so we've got a couple of things ticked off there that are improving. Yeah. But there's, I think there's still some gaps here that uh, means you can't wear this as your dedicated running watch. Yeah. If you're, I don't know what you want to say, sort of serious, whatever you want to call it, but actually yeah. there's a lot of times when you'll take this off and put on a, a different watch. It's just a relief. Like it's, the always on screen is a big improvement, but it only works with Apple Watch's native tracking. And this is just really limited. And I, I've said this from the start, there's no lap stats. You get a rolling pace stat, which is the previous kilometer, like, real time, which is no good to me, because if I'm doing like a run where I want to alternate paces each kilometer, just the last overall kilometer doesn't help me. I need to have each, I need to have the exact lap pace I'm on. How I do a lot of my runs is on lap stats. You can take a lap by double tapping it, but then you're getting stat and they're gone. You don't get an average lap. And if I find it bizarre, it's such a basic stat, it's not on this watch. But anyway, that's my big bugbear because I use lap stats all the time. Um, other things I think that are particularly annoying about it um, is the, yeah, there's no lap button physical. I think that's Quite a big thing for most of us and the fact that you've got this whole world of amazing running apps on this watch that are not allowed to use the always on screen i think that's the biggest problem for me there are apps like iSmooth run which basically turn this into a bona fide running watch they get every, all the stats they can link to sensors they'll everything sticks to strava now including apple's own app which is important that's a new thing but you don't get the always on screen and that means it's not a useful running watch for me and what i don't understand is why when it se it's seemingly not a hard thing to do from a software point of view yeah to load that workout with a fitness app with more stats from your workout. Yeah. So one of the things, the elevation, yeah. it now tracks, but it doesn't give you the descent score. It only gives you elevation gain. It's just, it just seems like, there's a, and also you can't do structured workouts in the app. Like even a basic run, walk or intervals one would be fine for me. So I basically just think that the app isn't there yet. It's perfect, it's perfect for casual running, but it can't replace even like a hundred pound running watch. 
you you yeah. can't you can't dive in with any depth no. to the training or or, or yeah. you know even you get the heart rate chart but it's very it's very really rudimentary chart, yeah, and it's, yeah. you know it's not and for such a good heart rate reader not having a proper chart and it doesn't give you zones even stuff like that so yeah there's I think there's a lot of easy improvements that could be made, yeah. but basically they haven't done them in six generations now of the running watch. They've made some little improvements, um, but yeah, it's not quite there. But if you are happy with an always on, an always, not an always on screen, you're happy to turn to wake. There are amazing apps on this watch that will turn it into a pretty much a proper running watch. Um, so that's good. Do you, do you think it's like a battery life thing that actually that day long battery life, if you start, <laughs> if you, if you try to sort of pretend that this is a running watch, that you can dive into all of those analytics is a reason they're not kind of no. making it that serious as a tool. I just don't think it is. I just genuinely think it, I just genuinely think it doesn't occur to them. I, just, I feel like, like you say, you can get lap pace on other apps on this watch. So why can't it can't be the native apps? They just haven't coded it. They, it doesn't seem to be bothered. And I, and I don't want third party apps to have the always on screen because then they'd have loads of apps with it always on and that would drain the battery, I'm sure. But yeah, I, um, it's close and I would love to use this watch, but it's not quite there yet. Anyway. This, this, yeah. is, this is our plea then to Apple. Yeah. Just just add a few more metrics, yeah. a few more bits and pieces in the <laughs> on the watch, and then in the post run stats. Yeah. Actually, would. you'd have a lot of convert. And and chuck in an interval workout mode. It's, it's such. It must be. You know, literally just. You know, I want to do ten reps, one minute on, thirty seconds off. It really would be enough for most runners. So the verdict is. Uh, we've just done our big watch roundup video and the Apple Watch is the best smartwatch for running. Easily. For all these criticisms we've just had. If you've got the Apple Watch Series 4 or 5, there's not enough here to upgrade. Maybe the Series 4 because you're getting an always on screen from the 5 onwards. And I do think that's huge for running and you're getting a lot of the same stuff, I think it's fair to say. Yeah. Um, compared to other watches. So there is the Apple Watch SE nowadays, which is, uh, you know, £100 cheaper. Doesn't have an always on screen, and from what I've seen in other reviews, it doesn't have the GPS improvements that you're getting on the six. For not for me, the always on screen will be enough to upgrade. To be honest, from that one for 100 pounds, it's huge for running. I think, um, but I don't know how you feel about an always on. Yeah. I mean, I, I think if you're if you're really just a casual runner yeah. who really wants a smartwatch, maybe save yourself the 100 pounds. Yeah. You know, if you're if you're if you're just going out and running sort of five k's for fitness every now and again, and you just want to know that you roughly how far you've run and all of that, then maybe save yourself the money, but if you're leaning towards sort of being a little bit more dedicated, then yeah. perhaps that extra money's a bit... It's bit true, yeah. I suppose if actually, if you're not really looking at your stats on the run, if you're not trying to judge a pace, you don't yeah. need to... And also, it is a very responsive race to wake. It does work. Um, and now it goes to Strava, the Apple workout. It's a bit of a fact... Well, it's not that hard to set up. And that, I think, is big for a lot of casual runners, that you can now have Apple Watch workouts on Strava, which is really important, um, because... Strava, Strava, isn't it? Um, outside of Apple, smartwatch-wise, we're not huge fans of... Wear OS smartwatches, they're really not very good at running. Even Suunto's attempt at one was really so poor on the sports compared to a normal Suunto, it was very surprising that they hadn't managed to take their experience and make it better on that front. But there are some great ones, cheap ones, like the Huawei GT2e is a very good smartwatch with a lot of nice features for running. It's a lot cheaper than the Apple Watch. But I think we normally say, if you can, it's better to make the trade-off on smart features and get one of the smartwatches from like Garmin or, um, Basically, sports brands who make a slightly smarter watch <laughs> than usual. So the Venue, the Vivo Active, yeah. that kind of thing. Even even a Fitbit is better than most Wear OS for um, uh, run tracking, and I'm not a fan of the Fitbit Sense. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> um, but yeah, overall, it's it's a brilliant smartwatch. Deal. Like, so I don't know about you. Like, what would it make you? What would you? What would what would be on this watch that would make you give up your sports watch? Would you ever give a consider giving up for the smartwatch for running? I think battery life is going to be a problem yeah. for a start because I do a bit of ultra. Yeah. Anything you know that I wouldn't go out and trust this to last me on most of the hundred k's that I run because no. I'm at least running double that time. <laughs> Kieran does them in about three hours. Right? Exactly. <laughs> um, so that's a bit. That's a big thing for me. And then it's just the depth. It's a depth of analysis, really. It's yeah. the other features that come around with a Polar or a Garmin yeah. and a Coros that aren't quite there. Um, if they beefed up some of those, maybe I would swap it out for my sort of midweek average sort of runs. But. See, I would be happy. I really like it. I really love design. I use it often in between runs. But for me, it really would just be the case of adding some more stats to the app and adding a, and adding a workout mode because I do like to have workouts buzzed at me just to make it easier to follow them. That would, I don't need the battery life. I'm happy to charge it every day. Like, I don't mind that that much. But yeah, it's just... Walkie-talkie mode is a big seller. Walkie-talkie well. mode <laughs> hasn't done it for me, if I'm honest. Uh, <laughs> I can talk to you when you're 400 metres ahead of me. It was so, the, yeah, so it's, I don't know, it's close. But, and, I, and it's not a priority for people like us for it. It's, very, it's perfectly good enough for casual runners, but like, um, I wish they'd just do a little bit better. 
or just let me have always on an ice move run and then I'll be fine. <laughs> just, just for Nick, just unlock it on Nick. Yeah. <laughs> That's it guys, that's our review of the Apple Watch Series 6. If you're really, really wanting to know all about the best running watches right now, we have a huge roundup we've just filmed and it'll probably be up before this review or around the same time. Go and look out for it. And like and subscribe and ring the bell. That's 100% what you should do. You should like, subscribe, ring the bell so you get notified when we do drop a video. It might be that watch roundup. Probably, uh, <laughs> probably say something at us in the comments as well. Yeah, let us know like what would it make you, what would convince you on the Apple Watch to give up your Garmin, your Polar, you know, what would, it, what would it take for this watch to make it a good enough running watch for you to make the switch? Or are you already there? Do you think that we're nitpicking and it's already a perfectly good running watch? Let us know. Bye.